Hi everyone, my name is Emmanuel Papadoyanakis and today I have the pleasure of presenting our work regarding publisher specific IDs and website administration. Um, this work is the result of a collaboration between uh, the University of Crete, Forth, and Telefonica Research and was partially supported by the EU Horizon 2020 program and specifically the projects Concordia, CyberSec for Europe, Team City, and Accordion. So uh, today, first, I'm going to talk about the motivation behind our work. Then I will present the methodology that we followed. And finally, I will talk about our results and findings, as well as some closing remarks. So let us dive right into it. Um, the web has become an integral part of our daily lives. And the truth is that we are used to and often demand free content. Uh, the fact is that digital advertising is what keeps online content free. It basically motivates publishers to produce new content. As a result, in an attempt to generate revenue, publishers make use of advertising services. These are services that display advertisements in websites and pay a specified amount of money to the administrator. Additionally, publishers often resort to analytic services in order to better understand their visitors and provide more personalized advertisements. All of these advertising and analytic services, and of course their interoperation, has resulted in a very complex and dynamic ecosystem. In fact, publishers often need to hire third parties just to manage their advertising services. All of this complexity has once again brought the issue of web transparency to the foreground. Right now, it is very difficult to say exactly which are the entities that control and operate a website. And it is important to discover the entities that operate in the dark and of course understand their motives because they affect our daily lives. They produce and deliver the content that we consume. So in this work, we explore exactly this issue. We set out to discover whether there is a way to find the entities that control and monetize on websites. And if so, do the websites that they control have common characteristics? Are there any trends that we can discover? So now that we know what is the questions that we want to answer, let us see how we were able to study website administration. In an initial attempt to uniquely identify administrators, we started investigating the source code of websites. There, we were able to discover what we call publisher-specific identifiers. These are identifiers that administrators willingly embed in their websites in order to use a third-party service. Uh, these identifiers are related to the accounts that administrators manage in order to display ads or track their users. And in this work, we explore publisher-specific identifiers of popular Google services, such as Google AdSense, Google Tag Manager, and Google Analytics. Here, you can see an example of the code that a website administrator needs to embed to their website in order to use Google Tag Manager. As you can see in this code, we are able to detect a value that follows a specific format and uniquely identifies the administrator's account. Therefore, if we are able to detect accounts and of course their operators, then we can shed more light into the issue of, web, of website administration. Now, uh, in order to find these identifiers I've been talking about, we built a puppeteer-based web crawler, which is able to instrument instances of the Chromium browser. This crawler is able to visit websites and collect important data such as network traffic and source code. We used this crawler in order to visit and collect data from the top 1 million most popular websites ranked by the Tranco list. In order to detect these identifiers, we extract values from source code, network traffic, and first party or third party cookies. These values must follow the exact and strict format of publisher-specific IDs. 
Then we perform various data cleaning techniques in order to filter out irrelevant values and ensure that what we are left with are actual publisher specific IDs. For example, we exclude values which match the format of identifiers, but can be found in the English dictionary. So after this step, we are left with values which with great confidence uniquely identify the accounts of website administrators. Then using these uh, identifiers, uh, we construct bipartite graphs. As you can see here, we have one graph for each service. In these graphs, the nodes are either websites in blue or identifiers in red. Whenever we find that a website contains an identifier, we introduce an edge from the website node to the identifier node. These graphs can provide us uh, with, with very valuable information about patterns of administration around the web. We also construct what we call a metagraph. This metagraph represents the actual relationships between websites. As you can see here, there are only website nodes and whenever two websites share an identifier, the same publisher specific identifier, they are linked together with an edge. The more identifiers two websites share, the greater the weight of the edge that connects them. By running a community detection algorithm on this graph, we are able to detect communities of websites which are operated and controlled by the same entity. And this is how we address our initial research question. In our data set, we were able to find over 500,000 websites that contain at least one publisher specific ID. This indicates that the Google services that we studied are very popular and they can provide a very good understanding of the web. Also, the metagraph with over 100,000 nodes resulted in over 2,000 communities. Each community is a set of websites operated by the same entity. I would just like to mention here that all the source code that you need to crawl websites, construct the graphs, and extract the communities is open source and publicly available. So we can now see the results and findings of our study. First of all, we studied the amount of websites that publishers control. We found that the great majority of administrators operate a single website. This was almost 90% of the cases. So these are basically simple publishers, often ordinary people that generate content and want to make some money out of it. On the other hand, we found some very big administrators that control hundreds or even thousands of websites each. These administrators can be big companies that own multiple websites, um, news outlets, or even third parties, which are responsible for managing the websites of other publishers. In addition to this, we found that these big publishers usually manage the most popular websites. Since they control and operate multiple websites, they're able to build a powerful network, attract more visitors, and therefore improve their reputation. Of course, since they have more visitors, they generate much bigger revenue. On the other hand, we have those little independent publishers that operate a single website, and most of the times these websites are less popular. Next, we performed multiple experiments using different metrics regarding the categories of websites in our dataset. There, we found that almost one fourth of the websites were labeled as news and media. This indicates that administrators of such websites are more likely to use advertising or analytic services. More importantly, we detected preferential administration. This means that administrators tend to operate or even acquire websites that have the same category as the ones that they already manage. Finally, we found that our methodology is able to detect not only websites managed by the same administrator, 
but also websites owned by the same legal entity. This is a very strong connection among websites and a very important step to shed more light to the issue of web transparency. For example, we were able to, to discover communities of websites owned by Renault and Philips. Surprisingly, we also found a community of websites of multiple subsidiaries, subsidiaries of one single conglomerate, Warner Music Group. This suggests that our methodology is even able to overcome the barriers of business organization and detect ownership in the highest level. So I, I believe we can see that the market of publishers and administrators is a prominent one, and we can understand a lot of things about the web through it. But how has this market evolved over time? To answer this question, we performed a historical analysis. Using data from the HTTP archive project, we were able to perform an analysis of publisher-specific IDs on a trimester basis. Our analysis was performed on a two-year span from April 2019 to April 2021. We were able to process up to 8 million websites. The analysis of these websites uncovered some clear trends. First of all, we found that the majority of websites contain only one publisher ID. This means that there is a single contributing publisher who is responsible for uh, and monetizes on the content of the website. Next, we discovered that there is consistency to the configuration of websites over time. Specifically, over 96% of websites did not change their monetization scheme during this two-year span. However, even though most of websites do not change their configuration, those who do tend to move to smaller administrators. So this is a clear trend and a clear tendency of decentralization. Websites move away from big third parties that handle their accounts and choose smaller administrators. In fact, in just a two year span, the biggest administrators of the industry lost approximately 25% of their population. On the contrary, we found that there is an increase in the number of smaller publishers that manage only a few websites. We conclude that this shows a trend in the market of administrators and publishing partners. As I mentioned in the beginning, digital advertising is a fruitful market. And this can only mean that the market of website administrators is also flourishing. As a result, new players have emerged and they seek a share of the pie. So to recap, um, in this paper, we talked about how websites that display advertisements use an identifier to indicate which entity will receive the revenue. These identifiers are publisher specific, and we found that different websites might use the same identifier, meaning that they are controlled by the same entity. Using these identifiers, we develop a new graph-based methodology that is able to detect websites operated or even owned by the same entity. Our analysis discovered clear trends in the market, such as the power that big publishers have, as well as the rise of new administrators. So the one thing that I would like for you to remember from this presentation is that by using these publisher specific identifiers, we are able to detect, study and understand the entities that control websites. Thank you very much for your time. I'd be more than happy to answer your questions. Awesome, a great presentation, Emmanuel. Uh, let's, we, we have some time for questions. Uh, so if there are any questions for Emmanuel, please feel free to unmute and ask. Uh, I can get started. So Emmanuel, uh, you, have, uh, you have this bipartite graph that you have created. Have you thought about using any of the graph embedding techniques that are very popular these days in terms of identifying and uh, getting even deeper insights from, uh, from your data and graph? That is a very interesting question. And 
actually, yes, we are already working on on utilizing more out of these uh, bipartite graphs and also the metagraph because we only scratch the surface of the information that such graphs can provide because uh, the the actual relationships among websites is something that it it hasn't been studied a lot and can provide a very good understanding of the web and the the website administrators so yeah that's a very interesting uh, next step for for our work it could probably overlap your bipartite graph with the website hyperlink graph uh, network and use that uh, for even deeper insights but great work great work